experiment to this. Okay. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Well, yeah, the last thing we have to learn, and if anybody has any partial fraction questions, we want to cover that too. But first, the last thing, and when I've been learning, we're reviewing, because we've already done this early in the year, and that is this wrapping test. So if you would turn in your packet to the page, this looks like this, has two big graph things on it. homework because I know we've got a lot of different stuff going on I'm trying to be cognizant of that. Okay, so let's take a look at the first problem. Our job is to list all of this stuff and then draw a picture of it. So how do we start? We do all the factoring that we possibly can. So looking at the problem, looking at the problem, what kind of factoring can be done? Let's try to be active participants today and not sleep. We can take a two out of the top. Okay. And we can, somebody said foil the bottom, factor the bottom, unfoil it, whatever. Does that look okay? How about that? This right here, does this? X minus one minus two minus two plus one. Yep. What do you notice? We can cancel. <coughs> and what does that tell us since we cancel? There's a, hole in, There's a hole in the picture, and where is it? Negative one. Where x is negative one. That's exactly right. Remember to find out where the hole is. The hole happens at whatever factor got canceled out. The zero of the factor that got canceled out. So since x plus one canceled out, the hole is at negative one. Now the hole is a point. The x coordinate is negative one. How do I get the y coordinate? I plug negative one back in right here, right? This is, now, this is what I'm graphing. So I plug negative one in there, and what will I get? Two times negative three over four. Is that right if I put in negative one? What is that? Negative three halves. So in terms of the picture, I'm going to have a hole at negative one, negative three halves. Now is there anybody that's lost at this point? Okay, then what about some other stuff that needs to go into the picture? We need to get some asymptotes in there. And where are we gonna get the asymptotes? How do we get asymptotes? We talked a little about this yesterday. Plug in zero for x and y. Now, if we plug in zero for x oh, and y, y so that will give us our intercepts. And we need those two, so we can go ahead and do that. If we plug in zero <laughs> for x, what do we get? If we put in zero for x, this is going to be my y intercept if I plug in zero for x. Negative 4 over 5. So here's my y intercept. Negative 4 fifths. 
Now, how about an x-intercept? How do I do that? The x-intercept will happen when y is 0. So remember, this fraction equals y. So if I set that equal to 0, for some reason we get confused by this, and it is so easy. Multiply this over here, what happens? Zero. It's just 0. So you're really solving this equation. What's x equal? 2. Two. Now, I want to emphasize, gang, these are the only two places you're going to cross an axis. So when you get ready, we're not ready yet, but when you get ready to start drawing the picture, you cross the y-axis here and you cross the x-axis here and you don't cross anywhere else. So make sure whatever picture you draw doesn't cross the axis anywhere but here and here. I still don't have my asymptotes though. I need those before I'm ready to finish. Where are my asymptotes? Horizontal is at 2. I'll go along with that. Absolutely, the horizontal asymptote is at y equals 2 because the limit of 2x minus 4 over x plus 5, I'll go ahead and distribute that. Maybe that helps you see it. Do you see the limits too? I'm talking about as we approach infinity. Do you see that it's 2? What about my vertical asymptote? x equals negative 5 is exactly right, and x equals negative 5 is the vertical asymptote because, kids, what about letting x be negative 5? You can't. And can'ts, cannot be's, are vertical asymptotes. Everything important is now in the picture. You had to list your holes, intercepts, asymptotes. All done. Now we need to create the picture. You can probably, you got a whole bunch of stuff here. Can you see this here? You okay with that? What else? That's not it. There's a whole nother chunk of this picture, right? And it's right up here. I hate to sound like a broken record, especially when you're already tired and um, whatever. But if you don't get this part, what do you need to do? Plot points. Point. You just simply have to take the time to plot some points. Put in negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, see what happens. Everybody okay with that one? All right. Why don't you start the next one? See if you can get the next one started while I'm erasing and getting things organized here. You? How do you know to put that there? Um, there has to be, you have to have a piece of curve. The vertical asymptote splits the picture into two pieces. You have to have something graphed to the right of the asymptote, and you have to have something graphed okay. to the left of the asymptote. Okay. You can't just have a big, wide open, empty space out here. There's something filling the okay. whole thing. so far, Carter Hobbaker. And how did you factor it? 
Perfect. Perfect. Now, what am I not going to have this time? A hole. Because the only way you have a hole is if you can cancel. There's nothing that cancels here, so this picture simply doesn't have any holes. All right? What, Mackenzie Wiseman, what else have you done? Have you done anything past this point? Yeah, uh, just the Y intercept. You got the Y intercept. Where did you put your Y intercept, Mackenzie? Uh, zero, nine over 16. I think she is exactly right. Does anybody want to argue with that? Beautiful. Thank you. Um, Melbardis, have you gotten past this point? Have you gotten anything else in there? Well, let's do something. What would you like to do now? Find an okay. And how do we find an X intercept, Nick? Take the original problem, or yeah, this or that, either form of it, and set it equal to zero. Now, do not be frightened. That is easy. When it equals zero, it is easy because you're going to take this denominator and you're going to multiply it over here, right? And what's going to happen? It's going to disappear. So all you have left is really x minus 3 times x plus 3 equals zero. What are the solutions of that? Negative 3 and 3. Negative 3 and 3. So we have x intercepts at negative 3 and 3. There's two of them. Have you gotten anything else in your picture? No. Okay, let's put something else in there. What do we still need? A lot of things. Actually, not too much, but we need something pretty important. Asymptotes. Yes, it's good you have friends. We need asymptotes. <laughs> yeah. So, you want to, well, I'll just have you do one kind. You want to do horizontal or vertical? Um. Huh. This, this well, yeah. Well, obviously, I want to do both of them because I'm a dedicated student. Okay. But <laughs> see, my friends are no longer helping me. Yeah. Down to the table. Vertical. Asymptotes. Vertical. Vertical. Or the bottom. On the bottom. <laughs> or the bottom. Are the bottom. <laughs> Somebody tell him because he's absolutely clueless. You need to pay attention, okay? What is that? Who can tell him how we get vertical asymptotes? Where the do bottom, they come from? The bottom because it can't be zero. What the bottom? What would it, whatever makes the bottom zero? So here, look at the denominator. You're going to have a vertical asymptote at negative four and positive four because those two numbers would make you undefined. And wherever you're undefined, you have a vertical asymptote. Okay, so we're going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4 and at x equals positive 4. Yeah. Logan Spahn, how about horizontal? Uh, the two axes, so it'd be, it'd be 1. It'd be 1. He found his horizontal asymptote by looking, and actually, you can look at the original, nothing canceled out, so you can look at the original or you can look at the factored one, it doesn't matter. But he said, look, I have x squared over x squared. The horizontal asymptote is the limit as x approaches infinity. And we have talked about limits. Right there, when the powers match, you just make the fraction. x squared over x squared would be 1. Now, no, what do you think? It's going to be a parabola. It looks like we got a parabola right in here, doesn't it? A little messed up. Does that make sense to everybody? Now, this time, Heidi. We had two vertical asymptotes, so our picture is split into three pieces. We got the piece to the left, the piece to the right, and the piece in between. 
we have taken care of the piece in between. What's happening on the left or the right? Any um, ideas? It's going to be drawing. Remember, if you don't have an idea, you can't just sit there. You have to plot some points. It's going to be done. I have an idea. I think it looks like this. And I think Melanie had the same idea. Now, you really only have two choices, kids. It could look like that, or it could look like this. How do I know it's not this one? It crosses, and it's not allowed to cross. This is the only place, these are the only places where it crosses. So it can't be this version. Therefore, by process of elimination, it's that one. But if you are at all uncomfortable, just plot a couple points, right? You can do it. Speaking of you can do it, let's turn that page over because we have some good review problems on the back. Okay. Anybody have any idea what in the world we're talking about on that very first problem where it says solve using Gauss Jordan reduction? Anybody know? what we're supposed to do. RREF. So this is a calculator problem. We're going to RREF. Now, before we can RREF, we have to get a matrix in. It's because you RREF a matrix. RREF, reduce, draw, show, and form. Now, what matrix goes in? Does anybody remember? What am I going to put in as my matrix A? It's going to be a three You're going to put in the whole thing. That's right. You're going to put in one, two, one, seven. 2, 1, negative 3, negative 5, 1, negative 3, 1, negative 2. This is different than what we did yesterday. Yesterday we did the inverse method. And remember what happens there? You don't put in just one matrix, you put in two. With, or with that Gauss-Jordan reduction, you put in just one matrix. And then, once you get it in, you RREF it, and a new matrix comes out. Now again, if you have an issue getting stuff into your matrix, you know, into the calculator, you need to lean over and ask your friend for help. the RREF, do you remember? All the way down. In the matrix. I got decimals, did you? Yes. Anybody match that answer? Yes. You do? Good. I wasn't sure I put my matrix in right. Thank you. So what do I put down? I mean, this is what I write down on the paper to show the teacher what my work is, what my thought process is. But what does this mean? What is the answer then to the question? X equals point six eight. Answer is this right here. This is your x, y, and z values that solve this system of equations. Anyone have a question about that problem? Do you have to write the answer like that in parentheses? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next. Oh, this is yesterday's lesson. Let's see if we remember how to do a partial fraction decomposition. Any 
anybody remember how to do this, please tell me you do. It's on your final exam. What? Factor the bottom. And when I factor the bottom, which by the way will be what? X plus 2, X plus 1? I am going to make two little fractions to add up to that big one. Still with me? We just did this yesterday. All right, what happens now? Anybody remember? I multiply to clear the fraction. So I'm going to multiply by x plus 2, x plus 1. And that's going to just get rid of that. And x plus 2, x plus 1. I know you can't see because I'm behind the board now. But I'm multiplying everything by x plus 2, x plus 1. So these are going to cancel, and these are going to cancel, and I'm going to be left with AX plus A, everybody see that? Plus BX plus 2B. Now here comes the really important step that a lot of times we're confused and we just shouldn't be. It's easy, easy, easy. From that one equation, you're going to make two littler equations. What are the two little equations that are going to come out of this? Negative 1 equals a plus b. You have a negative 1x right here, and you have an ax and a bx. So negative 1 has to equal a plus b. And then... <coughs> Everything not circled is equal. So negative 5 has to equal a plus 2b. <coughs> what are you going to do with that? Uh, You're going to solve it. it. It's set up beautifully for elimination or substitution, whichever you like. Um, if I multiply the top one by negative 1, negative <coughs> 4 equals b. And if B is negative 4, then it looks like A would have to be 3. If you write this down, it's not good enough. You have to match those numbers up with the correct denominator. You have to write the fractions, in other words. So your fractions... Your answer is going to be this problem equals a, which is 3, over x plus 2, plus negative 4 over x plus 1. That's the answer to the question. with that. Okay, next is something we just talked about a minute ago. We're going to sketch this guy. This is an easy one. Why do I say it's easy? There's no factoring to do, so therefore there'll be no canceling to do. So, okay, here we go. What do I have? Anything here? Um, There's no holes, so I'm looking for intercepts and asymptotes. The horizontal asymptote is one half. The horizontal asymptote is one half. That's exactly right. Everybody okay with Madeline's assertion? You need to be because she's right. All right, Miss Klein, give me something else. Intercepts or asymptotes? Well, you have to give me something. Um, 
you said the x-intercept was, how, how do you find an x-intercept? Set it equal to zero. Okay, so when I set it equal to zero, Katie, remember the denominator is going to go away, right? So it's two. Don't make it hard. It's easy. Don't make it hard. X-intercept's two. Zach Bat, can you give me an intercept or an asymptote? Yes. Okay. Whichever one you want to give me. Negative two. Did you say negative two? The y-intercept is negative two. We find the y-intercept by letting x be zero. If we let x be zero, we get negative two. Perfect. We have one more thing. I need a vertical asymptote. Katie Swanton, can you give me a vertical asymptote? negative one half. The vertical asymptote is x equals negative one half because where do vertical asymptotes come from? What makes the denominator zero? And I know that's a little bit odd because it's got the two in there, but if you want two x plus one to be zero, doesn't x turn out to have to be negative one half? So that's what makes that zero. Good work. Now we're going to sketch it in. Given these intercepts, I think you can see this pretty easily. Something has to be happening over here. Can you see what it is? Yeah. Pretty obvious, pretty simple. But again, it's obvious and simple when you're 56 years old and you do this for a living. If it's not obvious and simple to you, you're going to fly some points. Right? <coughs> Number four, we reviewed this yesterday. Here we go. We're viewing it again. What's the strategy? We recopy first and second columns. By these, we get zero. Remember, kids, don't fall for the trap. Whenever there's a zero, you're going to have a zero because you're multiplying. And that'll be negative three. So those add up to one. That is not the answer, is it, Maria? What do I have to do now? The other, side. The other way. So that would be, give me negative eight. Zero. So that adds up to negative 2. Jadelle, what do I do with my 1 and my negative 2? Subtract them. Subtract them. So 1 minus negative 2, the value of this determinant is 3. Number five, can VA be multiplied? Before I get it copied down, can I even multiply B times A? Yeah, I'm going in that order. I'm doing B times A. What are the dimensions of matrix B? Two, two. Two by two. What are the dimensions of matrix A? Two by three. Two by three. Can they be multiplied? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Dimensions of the answer will be two by three. So two rows, three columns. Jessica. Now, we need to find this number, right? Harvey, look alive, sunshine. We are going to find this number. 
then how do we find this number? We are multiplying these two matrices. How do I find that number right there? Uh, the two and the one um, uh, horizontally and the one and two. Exactly. We're going to multiply row one times column one because that's the row one, column one spot. So first times first, second times second, that number is going to be a four. Now when I move over here, I'm in the first row, second column. But I still do first times first, second times second, and add them up. So negative two plus one, that would be a negative one. All right, let's fill in the rest of them. You too, Andrew. Let's fill in the rest of them. It's getting filled in. Tell me what you think you got, and or what, tell me what you got, and we'll see if anybody matches. This is our first attempt at answers to see if they match for you. So we're all kings and queens of matrix multiplication. Awesome. Oop, which one doesn't match? None of those match? Oh, this is not good. Let's look, let's look at the nine. That would be the second row, first column. This is the second row, first column. So Delaney, first times first is negative one. Second times second is 10. Negative one plus 10 is indeed nine. Did you find what you're doing wrong? Okay, solve this system. Uh-oh, watch it now, gang. Watch it. That's an X squared. That's not. So please don't like do Kramer's rule or something. We aren't going to be doing that. This problem is going to have to be done old-fashioned, either substitution or elimination. So what do you want to do? Substitute? What do you want to substitute for? Well, that's uh, times two. And now that would be elimination. Somebody said substitute. X equals one minus two y. Oh, do you really want to do that? No. no. I don't. And here's why. I'm not normally this lazy, but what am I going to have to do if I choose to do this substitution? That's going to be a big old boiling stuff. Oh, I can do it. We'll get the right answer. But maybe instead of solving for x, maybe we should, if you decide you want to use substitution, why don't we down here say y equals 2 minus x squared? And then we can put that right here. So x plus 2 times 2 minus x squared. Now, uh, Stark wanted to eliminate. He wanted to multiply the bottom row by negative 2. That would have been perfect. We could have eliminated the y. So we have x plus 4 minus 2x squared equals 1. Are, we, are you with me? What kind of equation is that? It's like a quadratic. It's like a quadratic. <coughs> yes, indeed it is. I'm going to get rid of that negative. So I got 2x squared minus x minus 3. Some of you are horribly uncomfortable factoring this, but that's okay. How could you solve this if you didn't want to factor it? Quadratic. You could use the quadratic formula. <coughs> it does factor, I believe. That's good to But you could use the quadratic formula to get your answers, which are three halves and negative one. 
Now what's wrong with that? Yeah, remember, you're solving a system. So these are the x-coordinates of the points of intersection. You still need to find the y's. I'm going to go up to my top equation. 3 halves plus 2y equals 1. Some of you are so uncomfortable with fractions. If you want to, you can times everything by 2 and get rid of the fractions. Or you can leave the fractions and you get negative 1 fourth. Because you're going to multiply both sides by a half. If I put in negative 1 for x, I get 1 for y. So there are my two points of intersection. Number 7, we're not doing. We're out of time. What's eight asking? Yeah, We're almost done. Let's hang in there. It's asking for the inverse. Now, it's not asking me to solve using the inverse. It just says, what is the inverse? So I'm looking at matrix B. Can anybody tell me how to find the inverse? Okay, so take these two and switch them. So that will become a positive one and that will become a negative one. Got to, you need the determinant. So what's the determinant of this? 11. So we don't do 11, we do 111, remember? So your inverse would be 5 11, negative 1 11, 1 11, 2 11. Everybody okay with that? Remember those steps? Two steps, one over the determinant, and then this new matrix that you do by switching things around. All right, last one, and I'll stop for today. How do we find the area of the triangle with these vertices. Well, you have lots of options. And of course, I don't care how you do it, but the quickest way, the coolest <coughs> way, we talked about a couple days ago. Find the vectors. Find the vectors. And actually, it makes no difference which vectors you find, but I'm a creature of habit, so I will find vector AB and vector AC. This is a test question. I'm not saying the area part is, but you're going to have to build vectors on your exam, okay? So we need to know how to do this. So what are the coordinates of the vector from A to B? Negative 2, negative 5. Everybody okay with that? From A to B. Now what about from A to C? 2, negative 2. Now what do I do? I build a determinant from those vectors. I just stick them in between vertical bars. I don't move them around. I don't change anything. I just stick them in there. What is the value of that determinant? 4 minus negative 10? 14? So what is the area of the triangle? Seven, because we cut it in half. You want the area of the triangle, you cut it in half. By the way, if this had been a parallelogram instead of a triangle, what would the area of the parallelogram have been? If the triangle was seven, the area of the parallelogram would have been 14. Yeah. 
All right, good job, folks. Now, on, on your homework, it will say to do these two problems in the packet. You don't have to. There are two book problems to do. You've got five minutes to spend getting a head start on that, coming up and asking me a question. Let me turn off the video. Or getting ready for the rest of the day.